Welcome, my name is Ann Cole. I'm the Executive Director of Maryland Federation of Art, and I'm really excited uh, to share this award ceremony for our 11th annual Strokes of Genius show. Um, I think it's very interesting that a an all painting show is as interesting and diverse as this particular show is. Um, we are here with this show until November 26th. So I really do hope that um, you all get an opportunity to come in and see this uh, exhibition in person. I think it's absolutely striking. Really, the moment you walk up to the gallery and take a peek in the window, uh, it just draws people in. So I want to thank you all for sharing your work with us and letting us be able to draw people in to see to see your work. With that, I am going to welcome Jack Rasmussen, who is our juror for our Strokes of Genius exhibition. Just a little bit about Jack. He received his master's in fine arts and painting and master's in arts management and PhD in anthropology at American University. In addition to opening his own gallery, which was one of the first commercial galleries to move into downtown Washington, DC, he helped launch Rockville Arts Place, which is now VizArts. He also served as executive director of Maryland Art Place for 10 years and has been the director and curator of the Katzen and Arts Center of American University since 2005. As an arts organization here in Maryland, we are very fortunate that he lends his expertise as a counselor on the Maryland State Arts Council as well. So with that, Jack, I'm gonna turn it over to you and uh, welcome you to our award ceremony. Well, thank you, Anne. Um, thank you and your whole staff for making this an enjoyable process. And uh, thank you for inviting me to, to jury this show. It's really, it's an honor to, to be here. I did write a, uh, a juror's statement that maybe could lay out some of the context of you know why the show is the way it is and uh, could provide some opportunity for maybe some conversation uh, as we as we move through the show so i think i'll i'll do that first and then uh, we'll take a look yeah. at the winners i always enjoy the opportunity to come to annapolis and see what artists have been doing especially now as we seem to have passed through a pandemic and the isolation that has sometimes accompanied it. I know it's been a terrible for many, but for artists who are natural born introverts, this difficult time can also be a blessing in disguise. The work submitted to Strokes of Genius 2022 was of a very high quality. And I imagine these artists made the most of their enforced time in the studio. As a curator, people often ask me, how I can choose one piece to exhibit over another. I mean, isn't it just a subjective response conditioned by what you might have had for lunch? I usually respond that I have three criteria I want works of art to meet when I am putting together a show. Uh, number one, I want the work of art to provide evidence that the artist has mastered his or her or their chosen medium. Number two, I want to see that the artist has something to say in the metaphorical language that is painting, uh, something emotional or intellectual or sensual, or best of all, all three. And three, I want to see something new. I want to be surprised. Please don't bore me, light my fire. All of the artists included in Strokes of Genius 2022 meet all three criteria. Uh, I think it is a beautiful show, really very exciting show, surprising show. Uh, it's been a pleasure to jury that show and uh, I hope that viewing it provides you with the same kind of pleasure that I get out of it. With that, I think we can move to the awards I was asked to present and we'll start with the honorable mention and by the way, if anybody is here who is mentioned, please let me know because I would like to talk to you. Is, uh, is Claudia in the room? Yes. Oh, good. Oh, wait. <laughs> Hi, Claudia. Hi. So I didn't know many of the artists in the show, but I can always recognize Claudia's work because of the darks that she uses in her watercolors, which uh, really 
uh, I think it's kind of surprising and, and powerful and, and very beautiful. So thank you for this wonderful piece, Claudia. Do you have anything to say about it? Um, want to share? I just said, um, I, this is a, a little natural garden down at the beach, um, one that isn't fancy in any way, but I have just adored this garden. It, it's a very natural garden. And one afternoon, all these shadows were there and um, it just intrigued me. So that's why I painted it. I loved it. Terrific. Thank you. I mean, this was a very mysterious painting. No sugar, no cream. I guess that's uh, meaning that it's some kind of really realism and uh, it's, it's a powerful work. So thank you, Winston. Anybody have, a, have anything to say about this piece from the audience? It is amazing, technically and, and uh, subject matter wise. It looks like one you definitely want to see up close and just drink it in. Right? Yeah, yeah. You can spend a lot of time with it, definitely. Physically, it's really powerful. Thank you. The next honorable mention uh, is for an artist named Georgie. Is that how you say your name? Yes, sir, that is correct. Oh, well, you have two show, two pieces in the show, and and uh, both are great. Gee, uh, what's what's this painting about? <laughs> so this is uh, this painting is uh, one of uh, my historical painting series that actually depicts the um, January sixth uh, event and the heroic uh, efforts of the Capitol Police trying to um, defend themselves and the capital against the crowd inspired by the former president uh, Trump's uh, subjective uh, lies about the election being stolen from him. And so it's a historical painting in that context. And it's uh, part of like series of historic paintings that I've started uh, at the beginning of pandemic. And oh, uh -huh. Tell me about the composition, because uh, it's it's really uh, you know this could be uh, Delacroix or uh, David or or any painting of the French Revolution going on with that great triangle. So it is it is a classical. I mean, like a composition. Uh, I mean, like it's uh, uh, in general. Like I mean, like I've used the same principles that I mean, like artists. Like I mean, like uh, um, Rubens and. Uh, um, even the Lacroix are like used in their paintings, which like uh, if you look at like all of the lines, they actually go and connect in a certain point. So it's a classical composition per se, and that's the same principle that they followed. Yeah, I think we'll see the same composition in the show and the other piece you that's in the show that we're going to be talking about a little later. So uh, let's let's remember this and come back to it. Uh, thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. Uh, Next, Catherine Farrell, are you in the round? Yes, I am. Hi. I'm in my car and this is a phone, so it may not be good <laughs> quality imaging or anything. So do you know what painting we're looking at? Uh, yes, you're looking at backyard trees, yeah. which was one I did during isolation uh -huh. in my own backyard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I thought uh, both both of your pieces in this show. Again, you you also have two pieces uh, that uh, uh, that that won awards. These are really beautiful paintings. Uh, any, anything anything else? Is it is it just the fact that you this is where you could go your backyard and yes. so this is what you explored? Yes, I I mean people were always telling. Oh, we lost you there other more interesting uh, aspects, but uh, I'm glad I finally got around to the, my own trees. <laughs> All right. All right, well, thank you. Anybody else have any comments about these, uh, about these backyard trees? So we'll come back to Catherine in a little bit. Let's have, let's have a look at the next, next piece. Okay, now we've just done the uh, honorable mentions. Now we're going to do the juror's choice and these, uh, these artists receive a cash award for their uh, paintings. And they are, uh, I think, richly deserved. Is uh, Thomas Noble McCarthy here? Yeah, I'm here. Hi, Thomas. Hello. So well, how would you describe this? I, I think it could be read many different ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was a 
portrait that I completed in one of my classes at MICA uh, under Mark Carnes. I just wanted to zoom in on the head and focus on the mm -hmm. expression and like work with the mask a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a powerful painting. It's a tiny little painting, but it's really mm -hmm. very, very strong. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, and, and beautifully painted. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next. Another great little portrait. Um, is uh, Mike McSorley here? Uh, yes, I'm here. Mike, tell us about your inspiration here. Uh, uh, this was a model. Of uh, I had done a previous painting of this model before the pandemic. And during the pandemic, I just went through a lot of photos and uh, this one popped up and uh, put it together and worked on it for a really long time. Uh, and it was gonna be a study for a larger piece. I figured, uh, uh, I initially figured on doing a full size figure, but uh, uh, the, the composition didn't work out with photos. Since I couldn't get the model because of the pandemic. Mm. Uh, well, the the lighting is glorious. Mm. It's just glorious. anybody anybody have anything to say about this painting? Uh, I noticed it's called blinds. You, know, you give credit to the background, I guess. Yes. They're 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 pretty nice too. Uh, where did you go to school? I went to a small college up in uh, Pennsylvania, Indiana University of Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. near right outside of Pittsburgh. Well, they uh, they taught you good. I <laughs> love took a lot of workshops. I love the backlighting in this and the halo around her, the lighting of the blinds on the blouse. Everything is quite beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I I agree. I think. Uh, uh, there are a lot of great portraits in this show, and and you know, um, it is it is hard to uh, <clears throat> you know choose one painting over another when you're giving out awards and uh, trying to rank them, and uh, it's sort of kind of almost unnatural uh, to do that. But uh, one does what one must. But uh, in, in, in a way, the, the actual you know, assignment of, of awards is, is probably more subjective than just sort of understanding that something's going on here that's, uh, that's really good and, uh, and deserves uh, recognition. What's the next slide? I love this painting. Uh, just, just loved it, first moment I saw it. Is this yours, Joan? Is that yes. you? Yes. Oh, it is. It is mine. I don't. I don't even realize if I'm on or not. But apparently, I am. You're so. on. <laughs> yes. Yeah, thank you so much. This is such a lovely show. I wish I could see it. It is a lovely show. It really is. Uh, you got to be here in person um, okay. to to really to really get it. But tell me about this painting because that there's a lot going on. Yes. Well, the first thing is, this is part of a series of on the road paintings that I started to do because I was thinking a lot. My husband and I travel about a thousand miles uh, driving north and south on the interstates. And I thought a lot about truckers and about goods that they transport. But I, I'm also a landscape painter. So skies are incredibly important to me. and weather and the changes in the weather. And there were so many things I thought about, the open road as a metaphor, uh, the fact that these truckers do an incredible job to get us the goods that we need. And yeah. the landscape painter, I'm very drawn to the open road because I've been driving it for a long time and really have profound respect for the truckers who make this drive morning, noon, and night in all kinds of weather. Well, the, you know, the landscape alone is, is quite beautiful, but I think that uh, the, the, really the inclusion of the truck, the solitary truck, looks like it's pulled over for the night or the morning, waking up, I'm not sure which, but uh, it's, it's really kind of very moving and, uh, and, and very, very, very effective. Any, anybody else agree with me or disagree? 
I agree. And the paint quality looks luscious. It's just wonderful. Yeah. Again, when I was jurying this, of course, I couldn't see the paintings actually in person. Uh, but uh, but then when it came to do the awards, I was able to come in the gallery and uh, and see things in person. And of course, it's always surprising to see what you really loved at first wasn't as interesting as something that you really didn't get the first time you saw it digitally. So uh, it's it you'll 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 really enjoy seeing this show. Okay, then next, Catherine Farrell. Oh yes, she's here. Yes, Catherine. I'm here. You're here, yeah. yeah. Point one a mile. Ten I'm in my car, so I apologize for the background noise. I'm not driving. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I had a hard time choosing between uh, the uh, the uh, backyard trees and the caboose, although I really love the kind of, for some reason, the kind of quirkiness of the caboose right. and, the, and the view of the cars and the power lines and the, I don't know what's going on behind it. It's a really interesting painting. It's a scene in Ele old Ellicott City down by the railway station. And they do have uh, a caboose there that you can actually get into. Um, and uh, there's, you know, the hill behind it has some buildings and it was fall. Old Ellicott City is one of my favorite places to paint. I've actually returned to this scene several times, but the fall one was my favorite that I painted here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I did a lot of scratching on the trees and making wires. And <laughs> uh huh. So. Um, and a lot of nice, a lot of nice paint too. A lot of nice juicy paint. Yeah. Yeah, I really enjoy this this kind of painting. Uh, it was done on site, and. Um, at one stage, a, um, a big white van pulled up between me and the caboose and parked. So I concentrated on everything else around it and <laughs> just hoped it would go away, and it did. <laughs> <laughs> Any other so, comments? Well, thank you, Catherine. Thank you. You did double duty today. I sure did. Thank you very much. And next. So, uh, Britt, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Yeah, thank and for, you. <laughs> and for submitting this work. Where, where do you live? Uh, I am in New York. I'm in Brooklyn. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, tell us about this. This is obviously, I mean, the technique is, is uh, kind of, you know, just staggering. Oh, and, thank you. And, and so is the subject matter. Tell, tell, me, tell us about it, would you? Yeah, of course. Um, so it was inspired by uh, the phrase halcyon days. Um, there's a Greek myth that that phrase comes from. Um, and I suppose I could relate the myth, but uh, the, the gist of it is that um, a woman, her husband dies in war and she is grief stricken. And so she throws herself into the sea. Um, her father is a god and to sort of like show her and her, you know, deceased beloved Mercy, they transform both of them into kingfishers and resurrect them so they can be together. Oh. Um, and so this is sort of that moment. And also I found a metaphor personally in it um, for like personal transformation. And when you sort of find yourself anew, when you make a change in life and, and you have that uncanny moment of seeing the new version of yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. I, I love how it takes place, you know, under underwater, under the surface, you know, sort of that transformation in, in, inside that occurs. Yeah. yeah, yes. Really nice, really Thank nice. You. Um, yeah, yeah we're we're coming down to see it. <laughs> so oh, you haven't we're seen it either. <laughs> no, I haven't. Okay. Well, good. You'll you'll enjoy it. You got a lot of good company. Awesome. <laughs> could, could I ask Britt a question? Absolutely. Sure. So I'm I'm wondering about um, the extent to which you painted from imagination or had something as your model for the folds of fabric, for the hair in the water? 
I have a friend who's a photographer and she does some underwater photography as well. And so I used one of her photos as inspiration, but there is a lot that I also interpreted and added. I obviously added the Kingfisher. Um, so it's it's a balance between, there was a photo reference, but um, I also made a lot of my own choices, so. Okay, thank you. Of course. That was a good question, because because when you look at it, you're, you're really just wondering how, how was this all captured? I mean, it's, it's, it's a moment, it's underwater, and it's, and it's very, very crisp and clean and simplified, but while being very complicated and, you know, seductive too. So yeah, great Thank painting. Thank you. I have a question too for Britt, if possible. This is Elaine. Britt, I've, I did oils years ago and I have rarely seen one so smooth, the technique, the, um, the finish, if you will, you know, like I don't see so many touches, which can you sometimes add to a painting, right? But but this smoothness is intoxicating in a way. You don't see any. Really? Oh. oh my God, it's awesome. Oh, thank, thank you. I, I, I paint very thinly. Um, that's, I mean, I think that's where some of that comes from. It's very deliberate. I paint directly. There's no underpainting. Um, I just... Oh do a pencil sketch and then go in. Um, and so, yeah, everything it's, it's about two layers. It's, you know, the first pass and then I go in and sort of fix things and add more coverage where it's needed, but. Um, really only two layers. That's yeah. exquisite. <laughs> Amazing. Wow. Yeah, I agree. Amazing. And it's, it's so romantic. And so analytical and methodical too. I mean, the technique here is like, you know, wow. This Thank is, you so much. That's very kind. Really, really difficult. Okay, well, let's go to the grand prize winner. You know, it's, it's hard to not love the subject matter. I mean, I mean the cicadas, Brood X. And there's that composition again. Yes, yeah, so a little bit about the subject matter. You, I'm pretty sure you all remember the the cicadas. I mean, like oh uh, yes, <laughs> and the and the cycle it comes like every seventeen that years. That was that was right before the pandemic, wasn't it? It was after actually. Like, oh was, yeah, they uh, came together. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like right. Two of the plagues. Yeah. And so this is uh, in the realm of like uh, imaginary realism. And my wife has a phobia of bugs. So typically cicadas are like a big event. <laughs> she doesn't dare to leave the house until the, the whole period of cicadas uh, is, is gone. So that was like uh, my way of like bringing the cicadas like inside by painting that. And the composition, of course, is like I went through like, I mean, like uh, quite a bit of like sketches to get the composition right. And I also like wanted to capture like, I mean, the lightning and of course, like the dynamism of the different cycles of life, if you can say that. I mean, like the life cycle of cicadas, the birds and humans all in one. Do you always uh, paint uh, plagues? I mean, uh, the January 6th one is could also be kind of interpreted like that. Uh, well, I try not to. <laughs> I believe this is purely coincidental uh, in a sense, but uh, now it's uh, um, some of my other works are like more like, I mean, like uh, on the positive side. <laughs> Let's put oh, it that yes. way. Well, no. well, these are remarkable. Um, any, any comments out there? Anybody want to say a few words? I just also had a question for you, Georgie. So do you mostly work with models? You said that you'd had quite a few studies. Do you mostly work with models or some out of your head? How exactly do you put something which is so large and allegorical almost? How, how do you put it together? So I, I did not use like any models for this particular painting. It was all done to like, I mean, like uh, sketches and um, I mean, like I, uh, studied like classical academic like I mean like painting uh, and that's what my master's degree is in so I did a lot of like I mean like nude paintings and nude drawings back in the days so it kind of like sticks with you I can pretty sure like I can draw like I mean like figure in any possible way or 
pombo shape. <laughs> but uh, it was, uh, I mean, like here it was, the challenge was to get the, the dynamic poses aligned in a sense that they all like, I mean, like express like a various angle of uh, uh, for this particular event. Mm -hmm. Extraordinary, wonderful mm. painting. Thank you. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna love it in person. Anybody else want to comment on it? So I just have to say that the cicadas creep me out, and this is so much more elegant and impressive reaction-wise. I was not so pretty when one went down my shirt when I was walking out walking one day during this last year. So bravo, a way to capture different reactions that people had some are just fascinated you know I like them far away but other than that it was it's a an interesting subject and depiction so oh, thank you when, when you're in the gallery uh, it may still creep you out I mean they are so painted so realistically and so like they could <laughs> they could be crawling you know yeah oh, okay Not thank you much for the imagination <laughs> I love it thanks Georgie, who did you study with uh, your figurative painting? Well, I graduated like in uh, Europe, uh, in mm -hmm. Bulgaria. So the, the uh, Academy of Art in Sofia is actually follows the um, classical French academic uh, curriculum. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the professor that I studied under was uh, Ivan Kirkov. I'm not sure if uh, the name rings a bell here on across the pond, probably not, but that's where I studied. Mm -hmm. Are you living, are you living in the States now? Of course, yeah. In the United States, you are. Mm -hmm. Well, I know these exhibitions are now open to international artists. That's why I asked. Mm -hmm. It's lovely. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you'll, you'll, you'll enjoy it. Uh, as opposed to the subject matter <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun and it it's a really great illustration of my three criteria yeah. but uh here here this painting has it all and you know all the paintings that in the in the show had uh, had it to one extent or another it's it's every one of them is worth uh worth some time spent spending time with them uh, so it's it's a very it's a very enjoyable uh, uh place to be well, thank you very much for for coming. Thank you everybody for uh, uh, having me having me with you and and for sharing your time on this uh, on this Sunday. Yeah, and I do hope that everybody comes in to see the show in person. Um, I think the way that each of the artists involved just captured the light, either through darkness, like the piece behind me, or like Jones. Um, subject of the the tractor trailer um is just really incredible and and i just it just really brings it's very evocative the whole show mm -hmm. um so thank you to all of the artists who participated and thank you jack uh for your time in doing this um as uh as i believe joan you mentioned this show is up through november 26th um and there will be a closing reception that day so please come in um, enjoy your work, um, as well as some food and wine. And, um, and hopefully we see you uh, throughout this time period. Great. Wonderful. I have a question, if I may. Um, sorry. Um, this is for Jack. I, and you, I don't want to put you on the spot, but you said that you were surprised and you've judged. May, I don't know if you've done all 11 of these shows, but no. what, what was maybe your biggest surprise or delight when you you know what makes you happy and keep doing this and thank you for doing this <clears throat> well i mean it was a really strong group of work to to choose from i mean that's that's uh i mean i really do this so i can get out and see more artists work and uh and you know i really like it when there's you know there's a lot to, there's a lot of great work to see and uh, it makes it very worthwhile for me. And, uh, and this is, becomes an introduction to everybody in the show, an introduction to their work. And then uh, I get to follow it in the future. So um, I, I just, I was just really very surprised by, again, the, the strength of the painting. I mean, there's, uh, it's really kind of undeniable. 
Wonderful, thank you. Okay, last chance. I just wanna say thank you. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm glad I was in the show and I thought it looked very strong even seeing it on a flat screen. I thought paintings looked great, so thanks. Okay, well, you're, you're in for a treat. Good. <laughs> That's lovely. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Right. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you.